Welcome to Nevada Week. I'm Amber Renee Dixon. We'll get to some of the conflicts coming out of efforts to confront climate change ahead. But first, recycling. According to the Nevada Division of Environmental Protection, Clark County recycled 23% of its waste last year and the year before, marking a 3% improvement from 2019. However, Despite having the largest population in Nevada, Clark County has a lower recycling rate than counties like Douglas, whose residents recycled 49% of their waste in 2021, and Washoe, where 29% of waste was recycled last year. A lack of understanding about what can be recycled and how is what's said to be behind Clark County's numbers. And with that in mind, we went to Republic Services Recycling Center for some education. Jeremy Walters with Public Services. Let's get right into it. What are some of the foolproof items that we can surely say, yes, I can put this in my recycling bin? When it comes to what you can always recycle, think glass bottles and jars, plastic bottles and jugs, metal food and beverage containers, cardboard, and paper. When you say paper, does that include newspaper? Yep, newspaper, printer paper, junk mail. This is actually paper board, what we call chip board. So you could recycle that, but yes. And I, I thought that might be cardboard, but you can recycle a whole cardboard box. Absolutely, we love cardboard here. And especially as uh, consumers are getting more and more of it, right? The Amazon effect is what we literally call it. We see a lot more cardboard coming in the residential stream. I would say though, the best tip on cardboard is to break it down. Don't throw your whole box in there. Reason being, as things get dumped and jumbled around, you may get bottles and cans that actually slip their way into a cardboard box. And then once we compact that, that actually can be a contaminant for the cardboard. So break your cardboard boxes down. Talking about cleaning up some of these items, a cardboard box, for example, do you need to remove the tape or this paper on top? The cardboard boxes, no. Um, really, the cardboard processors understand that this is always going to be something that comes in that package, right? We have to ask people to do things to prepare recyclables properly, but there's a fine line between asking them to do too much and not enough. And if you do too much, people tend to stray away from recycling and then not do it at all. Right, I mean, for example, do you have to remove the labels on a, a bottle like this or a soup can like this? No, and that's the same idea, right? You don't need to do that, but the thing that we do ask you to do when it comes to food and beverage containers is rinse them out. Practice what we call empty, clean, dry, right? So if this still has soda in it, uh, you know, and it's got a little bit pooling up, I'd say squirt a little bit of water in there, swirl it around, tap it dry, put the lid back on, but then throw it in the recycling bin. And the reason that we ask you to do that is that the paper and cardboard is very fragile. If it gets soiled with food and liquid, we have to throw it away. What about peanut butter? I think you get asked that a lot. How much do you actually have to take out of the jar? Yeah, peanut butter is that prime example where it's like you could spend 20 minutes cleaning it out. And it's just a best effort. You have to make a judgment call at home. Is it worth it to try to rinse something out? For me, my furry buddies, they help me clean it out. I get as much as I can out of it, but then I drop it to them, they clean it up for me, and then I can throw it in the bin. But, you know, a little bit of residual peanut butter that was still stuck on, you know, the lip of the, the jar, it's not a problem. Okay, so your dogs don't get their noses stuck the no, in, not in right jars. Now. Let's talk about some of the items people think may be recyclable, but are definite no-nos. Yeah. And this is interesting in particular. The milk carton is a prime example, and um, you have to think about the complexity of that material. Most people go day to day, it's a milk carton, right? How complex is it? Well, it's a paper carton and paper by itself is not waterproof. So how do you make it hold milk? You actually put a poly-coated lining on the inside and outside. So now you've got paper, the poly-coated lining, but then you layer in a rigid plastic lid. You've now got three materials in one. This is very difficult to break down for recycling. Recycling generally is after single component items, right? Think about these things. It's just cardboard, it's just paper, it's just plastic, it's just glass. That's now three things. It's very difficult to recycle that. It does have the symbol on it that says it's recyclable though. Yes, and that is one of the biggest challenges that our industry faces is that there's a lot of products out there that have that recycling symbol on it, and that's not the case. It doesn't mean that it's recyclable curbside. There may be one small recycler in the United States that can take a small amount of that material, break it down and recycle it, but when we're talking about scale, right, we don't have the ability to do that. And so 
that recycling symbol is misleading. Just because it has a recycling symbol on it doesn't mean it goes in your curbside recycling bin. But don't let it discourage you. Stick to the basics. I think this is similar to this right here, which came with a food delivery service. It's paper and plastic and has the symbol on it, but you're telling me it wouldn't work. And that's the problem with that recycling symbol. Again, we've been trained growing up. We see the recycling symbol. We think that automatically, if it's got that on there, it goes in the bin. But what happens is that there's little to no regulation that requires anybody to vet the company that is producing the packaging and then labeling it as recyclable. So the best thing that you can do is check with your service provider, right? Someone like Republic Services, who's directly processing the material, we can tell you what is truly recyclable and what's not. That is another prime example of something that is mixed material and it's misleading because it says paper and it's paper on the outside, but as you start to break it down, you see it's more than one item. A big no-no, plastic bag. Yeah, so plastic bags and flexible plastics are one of the biggest problems that we see here. Those actually have a tendency to wrap and tangle around the sorting equipment, so they cause jams and inefficiencies at our center. Again, they have the recycling symbol on them, but sometimes they do a better job and they'll actually say store drop off by that recycling symbol. So keep those out of the recycling bin. The best piece of advice I can say is skip them all together, bring your own bags. For something like this that had strawberries in it, is this considered a flexible plastic? That's a rigid plastic, right? Okay. And so a lot of folks get focused on the numbers, right? Plastic bottles and jugs typically have somewhere on it a little recycling triangle, yeah. right? And it has a number inside. And this is one. yeah, if you're very curious, we do accept plastic number one, two, and five. But what we're trying to educate people on is plastic bottles and jugs, rigid plastic containers, right? It, it holds food or liquid. So you would be happy if you were just getting these? Absolutely. Uh, plastic straws. Same thing. And then add in the fact that it is very small, it will typically get lost in the process, aside from the fact that most plastic straws and utensils are made of mixed plastics, which are very hard to market, and very few companies want mixed plastics. Would this constitute as a mixed plastic? And, and this kind of goes along with TV dinner sets, right? Yeah, so this one is an interesting example because the lid potentially by itself is recyclable because it is number five, but the black plastic is very difficult for us to process because our optical sorters, they're actually designed to read, to oversimplify color and density of plastic. Well, all of these materials are going over a black belt, so this has a tendency to blend in with the belt and the optics will not pick up the black pigment and then it just does not get sorted out. Let's move on to contamination and it brings me to the pizza box because what's considered contamination on this? This half would be contaminated, this half would be clean and acceptable for recycling. And the pizza box is one of the biggest misconceptions that we see because people think, hey, it's cardboard, cardboard goes in the recycling bin, but think along the lines of that food uh, or liquid contamination, right? So a pizza box, you'd want to tear it in half, you could recycle the clean half, but the dirty half has to go. Uh, what is the big deal about contaminating a product? So what happens when it gets here? So for us, if it's super soiled with food or liquid, uh, you know, you think about when paper gets wet, it starts to break down, it can jam up the machinery, but actually it's for the uh, post-processor, the paper mill who's actually taking this and pulping it to make new paper or cardboard boxes. Uh, if you've got grease and cheese, which that's a very clean pizza box, I have to say. Uh, but if it has the grease and cheese and other things in it, when they go to pulp the paper, it actually can contaminate the whole batch, and then they would have to ruin it, uh, throw it away. So that would be quite a waste. It would. Overall, how well do you think Southern Nevada is doing with recycling? I'd say that Southern Nevada is getting better. Uh, there's always room for improvement. We see some very unique items come through the recycling process. We have seen a lot more folks recycling, making an effort to recycle since single stream has been the process here in Southern Nevada. Explain but single stream. Single stream is the big bins that we have where we throw all the good recyclables in the bin and then we do the sorting for you. Okay. Uh, the folks that have lived in uh, the Vegas Valley for long enough remember the old red, white, and blue crates that we used to pre-separate at the curb, but single stream recycling, you get 